You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This is an episode about long-term travel. And what I'd like to talk about is everything that you need in order to do long-term travel. I'm currently recording this in Mexico, in Puerto Escondido, and I'm now about five months into a seven and a half month uh, trip, which has taken us through Argentina and Chile, and then up to Mexico, and we've been traveling all around Mexico. And um, I'm having a fantastic time, really, really loving it. And I think that, especially if you are someone who works online, uh, if you work from home, uh, work online, and your job mainly involves just sitting at a desk with a laptop, why not do that somewhere interesting uh, where you can potentially pay less uh, to get more for your cost of, of living and where you can have great weather, interesting experiences, learn a foreign language, and travel around? It's so easy and feasible now to do long-term travel um, compared to any time in history, um, even compared to a few years ago. And so that's one of the reasons I wanted to do this post is just to talk about some of the things uh, that you can use for long-term travel. Um, these are the sort of experiences that, uh, that we've had, the things that we found useful when traveling. And I would also be really interested to hear from other people who do long-term travel, if you have any other tips or suggestions. Um, so let's go through some of the things that have worked for us. So first of all, let's talk about leaving your home and things that you can do uh, before you leave to really make the best of your trip. The first suggestion that has worked really, really well for us is getting post rerouted and scanned in. We've done this um, with a friend of ours who's helping us out with this. So we've had our post rerouted to a friend who uh, I've bought a scanner and uh, he's using the scanner to scan all of our posts and put it on a Dropbox account where we're then able to access it from wherever we are. And depending on what country you're in, there are lots of uh, commercial services that you can use to do this as well. Um, we're just uh, getting a friend to do it. Um, but however you do it, it's incredibly helpful to get your post rerouted somewhere where it can get scanned in. Then you can basically stay in touch with any mail that arrives for you and do whatever you need to do um, with your mail. Obviously, you need someone that you trust or a service that you trust to do that with, uh, but it is, has been incredibly helpful. The second thing that has worked really, really well um, is having a professional company manage subletting our flat. If you're going to rent out your flat um, or your house, when you go abroad or if you're subletting, then if things go wrong, if there's a leak or whatever, you don't want to have to try and deal with things by email. Um, we've just found it really, really helpful to have a professional agent manage that. And indeed, there was a problem with our tenants and they did uh, have uh, some plumbing issues that needed to get sorted out. That was all taken care of um, by the professional agents who are managing the flat. So that's something that works really, really well too. The next thing that has been just invaluable for long-term travel is using cloud services for everything, um, in particular storage and backup. So I've already talked about how our post is collected and scanned in. So we're using cloud services to get access to the, to the mail. Um, so for example, in a Dropbox account, um, with a shared folder with our friend who's scanning the mail, we can then download to wherever we are and check the mail and see what, what letters have arrived for us. But you can also use uh, cloud services for backup. So if you're traveling abroad and you're carrying a laptop around, especially if you're working, you may have an additional hard disk or something with you, but there is this great opportunity to just use the cloud to back up um, whatever it is that you're working on. And that way, you know, if the worst happens and you lose your laptop or whatever, uh, you'll, you'll have a backup in the cloud. And there are lots of different services for this. Again, you can look them up um, and see which one works uh, particularly for you. And there's all sorts of things to consider like encryption and security and, and so forth. 
But we found that really, really helpful. It can be a bit slow. And one thing that we could have done better is to run uh, the main backup before we left on our home internet, which is a lot faster than the internet has been in some of the places where we've been traveling. But that's something to consider. That's a, uh, just a um, kind of an optimization thing. In general, cloud services for storage and backup. And the other thing that we use the cloud for is really just getting a, as a storage place for any paper that we collect while we're traveling around. So ATM receipts or whatever. Uh, I'm just using a little app on my iPhone to scan in all of those receipts. It takes a second and then they're stored in the cloud. Um, and that means that I don't have any paper and I don't have to accumulate any paper, but I can still keep a record of anything that we need to. Um, so that's very, very helpful as well. There are many, many different little apps that you can get for smartphones to scan uh, documents. And especially if it's just a single page, like a receipt or something, it's really, really straightforward and easy to do. So other things that you need for long-term travel, online banking is really uh, essential for obvious reasons. You're going to be living from ATMs to get local cash in local currencies where you go. Uh, that is really the way that it has to work at the moment. Maybe in the future you'll be able to use Bitcoin or something else interesting to um, to travel around. But in general, you need a visa or um, other kind of card to, to access your cash from ATMs. And you need to make sure that you're all set up to be able to do whatever banking you need to do online. And there are various, depending on which country you're in and what services you've got, there are some types of account where you can do more or less things online. So you can maybe view your transactions and do simple transactions, but not bank transfers or whatever. So check it out and make sure that you're able to do everything that you need to. The next thing that is incredibly helpful is just having a password manager. So an application to manage all your passwords and make sure that you have strong and secure passwords. And there are many apps out there, um, depending on what computer you use, but it's really helpful especially if, you know, when you're traveling around, you're accessing things online a lot and you're also staying in different places and just for security, it's really, really useful. The next thing that has transformed long-term travel, which is really, really uh, essential, I think, to use in order to make the most of your travel is to use the two websites, uh, TripAdvisor and Airbnb, now, in the future, maybe there'll be different websites that um, will be more important. And it may also be in in different countries that there are other websites that are more useful. But for us, TripAdvisor and Airbnb have just changed everything as far as travel is concerned. You've probably already used TripAdvisor for hotels and stuff before. And that, I've, that's been around for quite a while. Airbnb has just taken off massively and it's a, a fantastic service. And that is much more useful if you want to stay slightly longer term and you want to rent out a whole apartment or you can just rent out people's rooms. But it's a private um, rental sort of referral site and there are reviews and um, photos and everything. So you can basically find accommodation wherever it is you want to go and uh, you can see other people's reviews of the places. And it's really, really helpful for long term travel. TripAdvisor is still useful. We've still found it useful for staying in hotels if we're just passing through somewhere. But in general, if you're staying longer, then often getting your own place is a lot more comfortable. So for that, Airbnb is uh, just incredibly helpful. The next thing that is a really essential uh, thing to have for long-term travel, I think, is to have an e-reader. I've got a Kindle. Um, obviously, there are various other types of e-reader out there. But uh, the key thing here is, is just that it makes carrying books around so easy and buying new books so easy. I don't imagine how you could possibly take enough books to keep yourself interested or have good stuff to read. Uh, if you wanted to do a trip like this for six or seven months, you'd have to try and find things locally. And, and uh, those kind of secondhand small bookstores uh, you, you may be able to find, but obviously if you're able to, if you have something like a Kindle, uh, you can just read anything you want and you can buy new eBooks on Amazon. So that is a really fantastic uh, thing to take with you. And along the same lines, uh, I talked about it briefly at the beginning, but you know, if you are working online, obviously you need a laptop, 
of some kind, um, preferably the lighter the better. But that's absolutely essential. Obviously, if you want to work abroad, then uh, a laptop is really, really uh, the way to go. I thought about just trying to work off an iPad, um, but I think writing off an iPad for long term for six months just wouldn't be comfortable. So yeah, a laptop, really uh, a vital thing to take with you. Smartphones can be useful, particularly if you want to take pictures, because the cameras are so good these days. Um, I've taken a smartphone, my iPhone, with me uh, over this trip. Haven't really used the phone at all, um, mainly just using it for taking pictures and for um, getting online. But um, Wi-Fi is so easily available every now, everywhere now that uh, you, you don't need to have mobile data um, and you don't need to use your phone either. You can just get online and use Skype. If you want to, you can get a local phone SIM in, in different countries. We haven't even really found it necessary to do that. Um, but the smartphone's also useful for things like the scanner app to scan all the paper in and stuff like that. Lastly, um, just a couple of bits of equipment that have come in really handy. I do have an external drive um, and you can get obviously get an, an external drive which again I think is useful to encrypt but as well as the online backup they're so small these days that having a little external drive can be helpful. Another thing that's really helpful is headphones um, especially if you're traveling a lot and so that's um, a useful thing to take. And lastly, um, a pretty obvious one, but you need international plugs for all your devices. You can get combination plugs that you can use for various things. It just generally, I found it's easier if you have um, a specific international plug for each one of your devices so that you don't have to keep swapping in and out. So, you know, if you have a phone and you have a laptop and you have um, a Kindle, um, then you're going to need a plug for each of those. So that's it. Those are some of the things that we've found really, really helpful so far um, in terms of just what you need for long-term travel. It's really not difficult these days, um, especially with services like Airbnb and with being able to access your data through cloud services and various other things. So, yeah, if you work online, if you work from home, it's really something to consider. Why not rent out your place sublet your apartment for a while and um, rather than work from your own home the whole time go and find a, an apartment somewhere in the sunshine uh, that you can experience a different town, a different culture, a different place at the same time so I hope that is helpful I'd love to hear any suggestions that you have and thanks so much for listening Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life if you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.